coming to you almost live from Studio 407, it's The Pause. With your hosts, Lucas and Mark. With special reporter, Chloe. On this episode, the boys interview Miss Jaeger and spotlight the dog program. Oh yeah, bear cats. Welcome to the pause. Welcome to the pause, man. Welcome to the pause. Oh yeah, bear cats. Welcome to the pause. Welcome to Liverpool game series match seven. Is no kino man. Tino can is no. Piro te garamo. Ah yeah, bear cats. Welcome to Pastor Lucas's show. It's called the pause. Oh yeah, bear cats. Welcome to the pause. Oh yeah, bear cats. Oh, yeah, Bearcats. Hello, Bearcats. <laughs> Ricola. How was Thanksgiving break? Didn't get too wild now, now, did you? We're talking about past events. Let's get into what you missed. Dodgeball played last week. The winner coming out on top was Team Dodgeball in Game 5 of the Championship Series. Lucas, aren't you on Team Dodgeball? Bet your bottom dollar I am. Now on a more serious note, we'd like to talk about what's been happening around the world with the terrorist attacks in France and the suicide bombing attempts occurring more and more around the world. Our hearts go out to all those who had lost family members or loved ones in these tragic events. Anonymous, a world-class hacking group, has threatened war on ISIS. They're trying to cyber attack them to slow down their forces. <laughs> now let's head over to Chloe with the spotlight. Here in Ms. Black's room. Ms. Black, can you explain to us what the dog program is? Uh, the dog program started five years ago when a student who was um, wanting to borrow my dog for a senior project to train my dog to see if they could get her to become certified as a therapy dog. And she borrowed Mr. Thompson's dog and my dog, and she wanted one to fail and one to pass and do a compare and contrast. And it turned out both dogs did excellent and both passed. Um, and so from then we had a lot of interest and we developed it into a program. So now we have anywhere from six to eight dogs every year. They're owned by Benita staff members and then they get assigned to a senior who's doing this type of work for their senior project. And they um, bring the dog to school with them all day, a couple days a week, and they do training in between classes, at lunch, after school. One day a week or one day a month, our trainer comes and works with us after school. In the spring, we go through a very rigorous testing process with um, Pet Partners, which is a national wide <laughs> dog <laughs> wrestling, which is a national wide um, therapy and service dog certifying organization. That's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. That was okay. perfect. Thanks, Chloe. We're here with Mrs. Jager. So, uh, Miss Jager, what's your favorite genre of music? Classic rock, I think. It's my favorite genre. Yeah, same. Classic rock. I'm old, that that works. Yeah, like uh, like the Doors. All that. What's so, what's that your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite band? Well, uh, I really like Led Zeppelin, but I also love Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. So, I guess that's not really classic rock, right? So that means <laughs> I like another genre too. What do you, would you call the Foo Fighters? I don't know what that means. Rock? Yeah, I'd just say rock. It's really rock. alternative, but... No, yeah, I'd say okay. rock. Yeah. And the latest, like, thing going on, JB, how do you feel about Justin Bieber oh. over the years? Have you heard his new album? I have not. I heard, uh, I, I've heard a lot of people that I talk to saying that it's good, but I, since I've never really been a fan of his, I don't really know his good music from his bad oh. music. I mean, I... It's just all bad. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. Um, but I think, I don't know, I just think he needs a lot of attention, obviously. You know, give him enough love as a kid or something, because he's, <laughs> he's broken. Yeah. But I did see the roast that he did on Comedy Central. Oh, I did roasted not see him. that. I and I feel like that was kind of his, his way of making reparations, you know, for all yeah. the weird things that he did. And, um, but it was just so forced and contrived that I didn't buy it. And so I, I, yeah, didn't, I didn't really I, redeem I didn't him. Buy, like, yeah. Didn't redeem him in my People eyes. Kind of set it up, sort of. Yeah, so I don't know. I just I'm not a big fan of his. So I, I couldn't even tell you one of his songs actually. 
have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. I heard his new album, but I don't know the songs. <laughs> Do you <laughs> his, like it? It's pretty bad. His new album? There's one song that I like. Which one? I don't. Know. <laughs> it's that one song? It's the one song that's overplayed. So, uh, what's the funniest thing that happened to you while you were teaching? So, one time there was a storm. It was raining. Well, for California, it was a storm. It was just <laughs> yeah. hard rain, basically. So, everybody was a little wet. So, my freshman came in, and I'm teaching, I'm doing my thing, and everyone's giggling. So, I look at the door. I don't know what made me look at the door, but some kids' pants were hanging from the door. And so, I immediately knew it was Scott. So, I look at Scott, and he's sitting there in his boxers. So, I'm like, Scott, go put your pants on. I don't think I've ever had to tell a kid to put his pants on in a high school class since then. So, that was probably the weirdest thing. Okay. Did you give him any punishment or anything, or just make him put his pants on? No, I just made him put his pants on. Okay. Punishment didn't really work I mean, with that kid. You kind of self-punished himself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't like punish pants. a guy who doesn't care sitting in his boxers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no that's shame. That's, that's not sure. really a punishment. So, uh, besides yeah. that. Well, thanks for coming in, Mrs. Jager. You're welcome. We'd like to thank our guest, Mrs. Jager, for coming out. Also, next week's episode, we'll be checking out CORE and their contraptions of death. And in that same episode, it's our super amazing, spectacular blowout Christmas episode. So make sure you watch it. We'd like to end this episode with Mullen's Conspiracy. Welcome to Mullen's Conspiracy Theories. You all have seen the movie Aladdin. It's a wonderful tale uh, seemingly set in the past about a uh, random Arabian night, I believe is how the song starts off. But see, there's something really weird about this movie. If you watch this movie carefully and pay attention to the dialogue, uh, one of the first things the genie says to Aladdin is that his clothes are so third century. So presumably the film is set somewhere around the third century. But then the genie also makes a bunch of pop culture references to the 1990s. So how could this film be set in the third century if it has 1990s references? My theory? That film was actually set 10,000 years in the future, not a film set in the past. That's the only way that the genie could be inside the bottle for 10,000 years, as he says, that he would understand 1990s pop culture references, and that he'd be able to say that someone's clothes are so third century. The genie and that movie takes place 10,000 years in the future, not 1,500 years in the past. Think about it.